You're listening to The Whole Truth, a Resources Rising Stars podcast. Investor appetite in the gold sector is starting to trickle down to some of the smaller players. It's been a while coming, but there's signs of it on the market in recent weeks. This episode of The Whole Truth podcast looks at Flynn Gold, a relative newcomer to the sector. With a market cap of about $7 million, Flynn is highly leveraged to exploration success in Tasmania. Managing Director Neil Marston tells us about the great history of gold mining in Tasmania and why he believes the company's Golden Ridge project is set to create some significant value for Flynn Gold shareholders. The beauty about this story is it's about as simple as it gets. $7 million market cap. They're about to put out an exploration target at Golden Ridge and then the emphasis will be on drilling out that target to bring it into the resource category. At $7 million, the company can offer shareholders huge upside to success with the drill bit, establishment of a jork resource, and is showing that the company has growth potential at Golden Ridge. Neil takes us through what they've got, what they're going to do about it, and how investors stand to make good money from drilling at what, in an area where they know there's gold. It's just a question of how much there is. Neil, Tasmania has become more famous in recent times for uh, farming fish rather than looking for gold. Um, why do you think you're onto something in Tasmania? Tasmania's uh, had a great history of uh, mining and particularly uh, gold mining. Uh, you've got the Beaconsfield Gold Mine, which was the largest gold mine in Tasmania. Uh, opened in 1877 and really it was uh, a driver of the economy of Tasmania before World War One. Um, more recently, you've got the Henty Gold Mine, which uh, Catalyst uh, Metals are mining. Uh, on the on the west coast, that's been running since 1996 and produced uh, to date about 1.5 million ounces of gold at a grade of around uh, nine grams per ton average grade. Um, and look, uh, where we're exploring in northeast Tasmania is uh, ge- geologically, it's an extension of the rich, prolific Victorian gold field. So uh, there's been a history of mining in that area. Methinia uh, produced uh, about a quarter of a million ounces of gold. Uh, 100 years ago. Uh, so there's certainly uh, all the signs that there's plenty of additional gold to be found in Tasmania. Now, let's focus on actually what you're doing. Golden, the Golden Ridge Project's probably your number one focus at the moment. Yep. Uh, you put out some very good results there recently. You've established a, a big mineralised footprint. This isn't a question of is it there or isn't it? No, well, that's right. The more we, The more exploration we do on the ground there at Golden Ridge, the more targets we're generating. Um, and even in the last uh, few months, we've announced uh, some soil sampling results, which have got, broadened uh, the contact zone out to a nine kilometre sort of focus for us at the moment. Um, on the west side, you've got Grenadier, uh, where we've uh, we've picked up soil anomalies and we're doing some work there at the moment. We'll be reporting that to the market shortly. And uh, Trafalgar North really popped out of uh, soil sample. That's about 20 250 metres north of uh, the old Trafalgar mine, which we've been sort of focusing our work around. Um, and we've gone and drilled two holes there, which we announced uh, this week, um, which have uh, confirmed there's uh, multiple veins of mineralisation. Uh, best uh, interval was about a 40 gram uh, vein. Um, and there's certainly a system there which uh, warrants further uh, exploration from from our side. So is Trafalgar North your most prospective area at the moment? Is that where you think you're going to get the, the, the genuine scale? Well, look, the, the, the zone between Brilliant and Trafalgar, the historical Trafalgar mine, which includes Trafalgar North, that's just a sort of a fattening of, uh, of the, of the uh, target, um, is where we're focusing most of our effort at the moment. Um, we've got plans to go and do some drilling between those two um, historical mines to test along the prospective contact, which is where the granites and the sediments meet, um, at a place called the Link Zone. Um, in particular, we've got some interest, uh, interesting early results from some uh, sea drilling a couple of years ago, so we want to go and put some holes into that in the next few months. Now, some of those results you've got from Trafalgar North, you've outlined <coughs> mineralisation over 500 metres wide. I think you said, you know, a strike of 400 metres. You're getting very substantial. It's, it's, it's open, down to 400 metres deep. Uh, based on that release. So you already do have something quite significant at Trafalgar North. What, what's the plan to grow that? Uh, yeah, well, look, we've, um, we've, we've got plans to do further drilling in that area um, and that will try and extend the strike length of the mineralisation. Um, 
But what we're doing right now at the moment is we're just looking at the re, uh, the models that we've generated, uh, and over the over the coming weeks we'll we'll work that towards uh, announcing an expiration target to the market. Uh, um, hopefully, between now and Christmas, we'll be able to complete all of that work, and uh, and that will give us a, a a sense of how much we've got in the ground. Um, Will that be for the whole of the Golden Ridge project, Neil, or are you talking more for Trafalgar North? Uh, that's that'll be for Trafalgar, including Trafalgar North, right across to Brilliant as well. So um, basically, trying to put a put a a number on how much we've got to date, um, and really then we'll go and um, and follow up these areas where we've got mineralisation, uh, but also test in between Brilliant and Trafalgar. So so we're trying to basically um, fill in the gaps on a three-kilometre front at the moment. So you're really on the cusp of, a, of, the, of the next chapter of growth, aren't you? If you're going to put an expiration target on the table, presumably the name of the game then is to bring the expiration target into the, uh, the resource category. That's right. Um, we've always been conscious that uh, uh, you get a valuation ba- based on what ounces you've got in the ground. Um, in most of the areas, we haven't got enough uh, density of drilling to put in um, um, mineral resource estimates, but uh, an exploration target is probably the next best thing to give people an understanding of how many, uh, what the potential is for this project, which we think is uh, quite su- substantial. Now, you've also got the Warrantina project in Tasmania. How, how does that rank in your thinking and priorities at the moment? Well, look, it's certainly the next uh, cab off the rank, so to speak. Um, it's uh, got some really good. Uh, shallow mineralisation. It's very much um, a, a classic Victorian uh, goldfield style uh, mineralisation. So um, there's a six kilometre uh, target zone there with historical workings on them. I've been out and had a look at some of them on the ground myself personally, and uh, they're, they're quite impressive to, to find these things. They've all o- overgrown uh, with uh, vegetation at the moment or uh, covered by pine plantations, such as where we're drilling at uh, Warrantina at the moment. Um, so um, look, in the, in the scheme of things, um, we're trying to find a shallow resource uh, like we've drilled uh, to date, uh, which potentially could be open pitable. Um, the... Um, where we're drilling at the moment is in uh, mature pine plantations, so you know what, that'll be harvested in the next couple of years. So, so the area is uh, sort of ripe for us to to try and uh, develop a, a shallow resource there, which would be a good uh, complement to the Golden Ridge assets. And then finally, Henty, tell us a bit about what your thoughts are there. A lot of see a lot of history there. So, um, well, our project is the uh, Henty um, Lead Zinc uh, Prospect, not to be confused with the gold mine. Um, uh, that's a really interesting area. There's over 50 kilometres of the prospective horizon, uh, which is uh, in the Gordon uh, limestone formation. And in the hanging wall and the foot wall there, you've got these occurrences of high-grade um, uh, lead zinc uh, with silver. And a couple of targets have been drilled out historically, a place called Greaves Siding and another one called Mariposa. They've got pre-jaw sort of resource numbers on them, but they need further work to to uh, bring them into something which you could uh, announce to the market. And um, it really, that as I said, there's a 50 kilometre front there, which is very um, attractive uh, from a you know those who follow lead zinc. Unfortunately, um, it's not a segment of the market which re- really gets a lot of um, response when you put out uh, good results. So. Um, so we're basically trying to, um, you know, bring someone who's who's got an interest in that sort of commodity to uh, join us uh, in the next phase of exploration there. So, so really, uh, you've got almost an embarrassment of riches and opportunities to explore. But obviously, a small company has got you know limited ability to chase them all up. So you you're really focusing on Golden Ridge. You see, that's where the shareholder value creation is, in, in the short to medium term, at least. Um, what's the market cap now? We're about seven million uh, today. Right, so so a huge leverage to to establishment of inventory at Golden Ridge. It's it's pretty well that simple, isn't it? That's that's it. that is the, the story. Is absolutely um, a company uh, like us gets valued not on the sum of its parts, but more lo- more likely on its flagship asset. So on well, the sum of the ounces in the ground. Yes. So um, if we can put ounces under under the column for Golden Ridge. Uh, then put some ounces uh, for Warrantina and uh, our other project, uh, Fire Tower, which is looking quite interesting. Um, that 
that that gives people a lot better way to to value us uh, rather than uh, you know the sort of um, uh, finger in the air at the moment. Uh. Now you've got you've got a sort of uh, uh, a bit of help on the board in terms of finding value, haven't you? I mean, John Ford is a very well known uh, fund manager around the country, highly successful with his own fund. Lal is he? He's obviously driving uh, the idea that we're here to make money, not just go on a magical mystery tour. <laughs> uh, look, John's uh, great to have on the board. Um, uh, his insight into the market on a day-to-day basis is very valuable for a company like us. Uh, yeah, look, um, Laos, Laos had a success story. They, they're looking for return on investment. Um, they're very supportive of what we've done to date. They've he's had some big wins in recent times. And, and so what, what's, what's their stake in in the company. So they've got about 4.4% of uh, Flynn at the moment. So they're not uh, insubstantial and uh, they've, they've maintained their equity position. So um, they're taking a, a longer term view than perhaps uh, what the market does at the moment. Uh, and really, um, very they're very encouraged by the re- results we're getting to date. Um, so um, I, I look forward to being able to reward them with a, a real um, uh, increase in, in the value of the company. Right. So what does the next six months hold? Okay. Well, the next six months, we've, uh, as I said, we're certainly um, looking at getting that expiration target out. Uh, we've got some targets to drill test um, uh, across that uh, Golden Ridge uh, zone between Brilliant and Trafalgar. Uh, we've got uh, a few other expiration areas which are ongoing. Um, plan to get back to Warrantina and uh, put some uh, more holes into that once we've completed our modelling there. Uh, so um, and combined that with uh, over at Fire Tower doing a similar thing. So there's a pathway of uh, activity going on. So um, there there's shouldn't be any uh, shortage of news for investors to um, to c- get their teeth into. Yeah, great. Neil, thanks very much for your time. We might revisit this story after Christmas and see how the drilling's looking and uh, the creation of uh, an inventory and uh, what the market's going to value at. Yep, thanks very much for your time, Paul. Thanks. You've been listening to The Whole Truth, a Resources Rising Stars podcast produced by Resource Media, hosted by Paul Armstrong for Reed Corporate. Please note that Reed Corporate does not provide investment advice and investors should seek personalised advice before making any investment decisions.